Welcome to Together. The Together.Church ministry is a part of Verse of the Day. And each Sunday, we have been taking time to go in a little more depth and examine the Verse of the Day and provide a message for Sunday morning worship with family and friends that is home-based. Others are using this for their small group or for their house church and doing it in the evening. We welcome you to Together, and we pray you're blessed. Today, our focus verse comes from Galatians 6 and verse 14. And today, this verse is going to draw us in to focus on the meaning and the obscenity of the Messiah dying on the cross and the love of Jesus that put him there. Here is our verse of the day. May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I don't know how to help you grab a hold of the meaning of this verse without doing a little bit of explanation. So I want to tell you about a couple that I met many years ago when I was a a preaching minister in Austin, Texas. Their names were Tubby and Versi. They had never been able to conceive children, and so they decided that they would take advantage of Tubby's work with an oil company and visit all over the world and let business and work take them all sorts of incredible places. Over the years, they lived through three coups. They lived in 20-something countries, and oftentimes they lived in some of the most beautiful places on earth. One of the places they lived right off their back porch was a perfect unobstructed view of Mount Kilimanjaro. Now, I told Tubby, I said, surely, Tubby, it had to be incredible to live in such a wonderful, beautiful place. And he said, Phil, after you've lived in a place for three months, it doesn't matter how beautiful it is. It simply becomes home and you miss the wonder and the sense of beauty. Unless somebody comes and visits and they see it with fresh eyes and you get to see it again for the first time. There is a sense at which many of us are what I call wonder blind. We get so used to beautiful things and living in beautiful places and having wonderful blessings that we become wonder blind to them. We don't see them anymore. That's why always giving thanks to God for our blessings and who he is is essential when we pray. That's why reading the Psalms with all their ups and downs and highs and lows reawakens us to the wonder of God and his creation and his love for us. We don't want to become wonder blind. But there's another kind of blindness that we can suffer from as well. And that can be junk blind. I have a friend that preached for many years in a town where we lived too for a while. And he said, I live in the only town over 100,000 people where every major entrance into the city has a junkyard. And That was a city that had beautiful places, several college campuses that were beautiful, and they had several nice housing areas. But many of the major thoroughfares had old discarded building, run-down houses, junk stores, junk piled up in places, and people didn't pick up paper and trash very well, and so it blew around everywhere, and they made excuses for it, even though a lot of other places nearby that were windy didn't have the trash and the junk problem. After we lived there a while, we became junk blind, just like most of the people that lived there. You just don't see it anymore. We can become junk blind. We can become wonder blind. But maybe the deepest illness of all, the worst blindness, is a form of spiritual blindness that we'll call being cross-blind. We see crosses everywhere. They're part of our life as Christians. 
Many of us wear them to honor Jesus and remind ourselves of what he did to purchase us from sin. But we also know that many people just wear them as decoration. They don't have any loyalty to Jesus, and their lifestyle doesn't look anything like Jesus. And then we look around, and crosses are everywhere. They're painted on buildings. They're on top of steeples. They're seen in beautiful mountainscapes on top of mountains or old houses in the middle of nowhere that have a special area where they've erected a cross. Crosses are everywhere. And so over time, because for us, they remind us of Jesus and his love, we become blind to the scandal, the absolute abhorrent reality of what a cross means. Paul says, may I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Paul said, my only boast should be the cross of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, Paul's boast would have been incomprehensible either a Jew or a Gentile in his day. To boast in a cross was impossible. It was incomprehensible. It was, to use the word of Vizzini for all you Princess Bride fans, inconceivable. And it is inconceivable because the word cross, starao, was a word that you did not use in polite public. It was profane. It was crude. It was a swear word. It was ugly. It was an, uh, a word that only uncouth people would say. And we understand why, right? Because when Jesus was crucified, remember who he was crucified with. Criminals on either side of him. Barabbas was released. A man that was an insurrectionist and a murderer was released. That's the kind of people that were executed. And he was released so that Jesus could be crucified. For Jesus to be crucified, he identified himself with the worst of the worst, the vilest of the vile. He was executed naked before a howling mob executed as a traitor of the Roman state, someone despised and rejected. The word starosan alton was chanted at his trial. Starosan alton, starosan alton, starosan alton, which means crucify him, crucify him. And those very words spoken by Jews would have been obscene. They were an obscenity for a Jew to say or identify with. And yet they were speaking that about Jesus. It was unbelievably offensive. And they knew it. And they knew what they were asking for. And what happened next proves it. Jesus was beaten and mocked. A robe placed on him. A crown of thorns. He was scourged and nailed to a cross. He was stripped of all his clothing. And then as he hung naked, gasping for every breath, soldiers took his garments and they gambled for them at the foot of his cross. The Roman soldier detail in charge of his execution mocked him. They belittled him. Their calloused, death-experienced hands nailed him to that tree. Nearby the cross were the Jewish religious leaders, the most holy of Israel's holiest. They're mocking the Son of God and Jesus Christ. And the friends and family were left to agonize at a short distance away as their loved one was discredited, dehumanized, abused, belittled, and struggled for his last breath and died. We miss the irony when Paul says, may I never boast. The words 
for may I never or my genital. It sounds almost Cleon if you're a Star Trek fan. It's a harsh word. God forbid. And it's like the song says, God forbid that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my Lord. Except Paul would say, God forbid that I boast in anything but the cross. But anyone else alive would say, God forbid that I ever boast about anything related to the cross. You see, the cross is a reminder that the crucified was gruesomely treated and powerless. They suffered from the cruelty of an oppressor that had all power over their life and death. They were stripped not just of their garments, but of their dignity as they relieved themselves and defecated on themselves while people jeered and mocked as they hung and died. They were hung publicly in shame by the side of the road outside the city so people could mock them as they walked in and out. And the very act of crucifying them was true, crude a word to say. Paul makes this clear when he writes to the Corinthians and he says, I never preached anything to you but the cross of Christ. But he acknowledged that the cross of Christ was an offense. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block, a cause of offense to Jews, and foolishness, or literally, moronity to Gentiles. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. But Paul doesn't stop there. He does something even more unthinkable than saying, may I never boast in the cross. He says, may I never boast except in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, first, you need to know the word Lord was a divine term that was reserved for the emperor and Caesar because Christians would call Jesus alone Lord. Many of them were executed over the first three centuries. And then for Paul to identify a crucified man with the Messiah, with the Christ, those two terms are the same, Christ and Messiah, Messiah, the Jewish term, Christ, the Gentile or Greek term. Because Paul identified Jesus, the Christ who was crucified, it was insane especially to the Jewish mind, because the Jewish law, the law of Moses, the Torah said, you must not leave the body hanging on the pole overnight. By pole, they're talking about something like a cross. Be sure to bury it that same day, because anyone who is hung on a pole, a cross, is under God's curse. You must not desecrate the land of the Lord your God, the land that he is giving you as an inheritance, by leaving the body overnight. A crucified Messiah was an impossibility for a Jewish person. There could be no crucifixion for the Messiah. Remember when Jesus said the Son of Man must go to the cross and Peter rebuked him? Yes, they weren't ready for a crucified Messiah. But that is the core essence, the genius of God's grace. Because in this story of the cross is great power. Paul could say, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those of us who are being saved, it is the power of God. But you see, Paul wasn't the very first one to say that about Jesus, the Christ, who is Lord, is he? Peter stood up on Pentecost and said, This Jesus whom you crucified, God has made both Lord and Christ. This is the essence of the Christian gospel, that God in human flesh came to earth and was willing to do to endure the gruesome reality of the cross to save us. But it turns everything around because he does. Instead of gruesomely powerless, Jesus is beautifully powerful. Instead of 
demonstrating the cruelty of the oppressor, we see the deep love of God because Jesus makes clear nobody could hang him on the cross unless he goes willingly. Instead of being stripped of dignity, he demonstrated that God understands our pain in the worst of moments. Instead of being hung publicly in shame, in the cross we see Jesus and we find a Savior who is willing to go anywhere and do anything to reach us. Instead of the cross being something too crude to say, for us as Christians, the cross is the place where we find salvation and receive new life. Yes, our only boast. God forbid that we boast in anything else except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. You remember the lyrics of the beautiful Hillsong worship song, A Thousand Billion X or So Will I? It speaks of the cross in these terms. God of salvation, you chased down my heart. You did so through all my failure and pride. How? On a hill you created, the light of the world, Jesus, was abandoned in darkness to die. But we know he didn't stay dead, don't we? So we join Paul in saying and believing, God forbid that we should boast in anything except the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we've crucified ourselves to the world and the world to us to live for the one who went to the cross instead of us. It is our only boast. So what do we do with that? Well, we make a commitment to live upside down to the rest of the world. If the cross was incomprehensible and offensive to Jews and non-Jews in Jesus' day, but the power of God to those who are being saved, then we choose to live upside down in the way of the cross, different than the rest of the world. We're here to serve and bless and forgive, include and welcome others to Jesus. That's what the cross means. There are no better, there are no less. We are all one in Christ Jesus, and we stand on equal ground at the foot of the cross. May I never boast, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. But how do we have the gift that Jesus purchased at the cross? If you read the book of Acts, the time that there were the first Christians, the first 30 years of Christianity, there's a consistent theme that runs through the whole book. And if you want to receive the Christ of the cross, you must believe that Jesus is not only the Son of God, but he is Jesus Christ, the Lord, who died for your sins. Believe that. Claim that. Trust that. If you don't know who Jesus is, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John in the Gospels and understand the cross was for you. Jesus did it because of his love for you. The, the second thing that we see in response to the cross is people were baptized in water. It happened at Pentecost, the very first day Jesus was declared Lord in Christ, the one that was crucified. We see it again in Acts 10 when Cornelius believed that Jesus went around doing good and was Lord in Christ, crucified and raised from the dead. And we see it with others like Lydia and her household and the Philippian jailer who believed in Jesus and was taken that same hour of the night and baptized. And they were baptized not just to get dipped in water as a symbol, but they did it to share in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection to declare, may I never boast except in the cross of Christ 
And I've shared in that cross by dying with him in baptism and being raised to new life. And the third key element that happens in all of these conversions, sometimes it comes at the end, sometimes it comes in the middle, sometimes it begins a little bit at the first and the Spirit makes his presence fully known in the telling of the story, but it's the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that cleanses us and makes us new and gives us new life, Jesus says in John 3. So these three are our witness that we believe that the crucified Jesus is Lord and Christ. Our confession of faith to others, our baptism in water, sharing in his death, burial, and resurrection, and the coming of the Spirit. Don't live life without that assurance so that you can join us and say, forbid that I should boast in anything other than the cross of my Lord Jesus Christ. Until next week, God bless and let's live the way of the cross.